Ryan Fitzpatrick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on November 5, 2017 Getty Images Insight, Hindsight and Foresight as we segue from Week 9 to Week 10 in NFL action opening kickoff for starters perspective on the big news everything's falling apart for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In almost every way, especially after Monday's developments. Let's count some of them. The NFL on Monday afternoon suspended star receiver Mike Evans for this week's game against the New York Jets for blindsiding from behind, at ramming speed, defenseless New Orleans cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, between plays. That Evans WASNT ejected for the horrific hit is hard to believe and rendered Saints head coach Sean Payton livid. Never mind that Evans' hit was in retaliation for Lattimore swatting away Bucks QB Jameis Winston's arm, after Winston tapped Lattimore from behind along the sideline to make some unnecessary point. Evans should feel lucky he's gone for only one game without pay. That he was so frustrated as to do something so egregious speaks to the current state of the team and its leadership. Earlier in the game, Winston re-injured the sprained AC joint in his right throwing shoulder that has been bothering him for a month. On Monday head coach Dirk Coder announced that Winston now won't play for a couple weeks, to rest the shoulder. Journeyman Ryan Fitzpatrick on Sunday will start for his seventh NFL team, against his sixth, the Jets, Coder appears to be losing control of his team. And the side of the ball he's in charge of has underachieved. That should concern him. Remember, the Bucks fired Lovey Smith after Winston's rookie 2015 season to elevate Coder, Smith's offensive coordinator. Coder HASNT been getting anywhere close to the most out his super-talented offensive playmakers. Sore shoulder or not, Winston has continued in most games this year to force knucklehead throws too often, maybe worst of all, the Bucks' defense has been absolutely awful. Coder's friend, defensive coordinator Mike Smith, has a whole lot less to work with on his side of the ball, talent-wise, but no one thought the Bucks' defense could be this porous. So what now seen before this season as one of the NFL's Zupon coming powers, and coming off a promising 97 record in 2016, the Bucks instead have been a massive disappointment, nearly every week. They're 26, alone in the NFC South cellar. If Coder ISNT on the hot seat, he ought to coach as though he is. His bosses, the Glazer brothers, aren't exactly the most patient in the league. Since firing John Gruden after the 2008 season, ownership has fired head coaches every two or three years. At this rate, it does and look like Coder will be the first since Gruden to make it to year four. Trends not coincidences it happened again, so it probably will happen again one. Looks like the Houston Texans are the latest omgwer suddenly desperate for a quarterback and a quarterback NFL team to pass on Colin Kaepernick. After losing rookie phenom Deshaun Watson last Thursday to an ACL tear, and after Tom Savage's second brutal performance of the season, Texans head coach Bill O'Brien was asked at the top of his Monday news conference if he and GM Rick Smith have changed their thinking to maybe bring in free agent QB Colin Kaepernick. There's a discussion about the roster and what's out there every day, O'Brien said. But what about Kaepernick in particular yeah, I mean, everybody gets discussed. Is that a problem I SNT that the way most teams do it people seem shocked by that. Later, though, O'Brien reiterated the club's year-long mantra that as we sit here right now, they're happy with the QBs they have too. Scoring is up since week two, when, as we wrote here at the time, the average output per team per game was 20.1 points, on pace to be the league's lowest rate since 1993, according to annual stats posted at profootballreference.com. At the season's midway point, however, that figure has jumped to 21.9 points per game, but still on pace to be the lowest output this decade. With a few more embarrassing defensive showings such as those Sunday by the New York Giants' 5,117 loss to the Los Angeles Rams and Denver Broncos' 5,123 loss at Philadelphia, scoring could get back up to this decade's 2,223 points per game range 3. In their season opening losses to Minnesota and New England, the New Orleans Saints allowed a combined 1,025 yards of offense, portending another disastrous year of defense. Instead, during their six game win streak since then, the Saints have allowed just 265 total yards and just 15 points per game, and have forced 12 turnovers. This coming Sunday, the Buffalo Bills will test the run stopping quotient of that defensive turnaround. Hero Jared Goff, QB, Rams he absolutely rocked it in New York, throwing for 311 yards and 4 TDs in just three quarters of work as the Los Angeles Rams pasted hapless host New York Giants, 5,117. Even cynical doubters such as me now have to buy what Goff and the Rams are selling, an undeniably powerful offense that can contend into January in the NFC. Zero Leonard Fournette, RB, Jaguars a lot of stiff competition for this award this week. 
Fournette gets it because he's a rookie eight games into his career who reports to Jaguars head of football operations Tom Coughlin and head coach Doug Maroney, both dedicated disciples of draconian discipline, and Fournette apparently thought there'd be no ramifications for missing numerous team appointments last week, such as a workout and medical treatment. As punishment Maroney didn't dress him for Jacksonville's 237 defeat of Cincinnati, in which the Jags still rushed for 149 yards. Stock up Jacoby Brissett, QB, Colts in the event, Andrew Luck's shoulder malady impacts Indy's 2018 season, too. Maybe the Colts have something here with Brissett, the second-year passer they acquired just before the regular season from New England. In the Colts' 2014 win at Houston, Brissett completed 20 of 30 for 308 yards, two TDs and no picks and, more than that, showed more comfort in the pocket and made big plays when needed. Over the past four games his TD topics ratio is 5 to 1 and he has completed 63% of his throws. That's good considering the Colts lost three of those games. Stock down Blair Walsh, PK, Seahawks We figured Seattle's off-season decision to dump Stephen Hauschka for yips struck former Minnesota PK Blair Walsh was gonna bite the Seahawks in the backside at some point this season, Wright said Chomp occurred Sunday, when Walsh pulled wide left three makeable first-half field goal attempts, from 39, 44 and 49 yards out. Had better find his confidence, and fast. Now that was cool nothing in Week 9 beats what I'm calling the Hill Mary. That is, Kansas City's super creative, alternate take on the Hail Mary end of half heave. With most Dallas defenders in the end zone on the last play of the first half, awaiting a traditional Hail Mary deep throw, with 002 left and KC at its own 44, Chiefs QB Alex Smith just dumped it off short up the middle to Tyreek Hill and his unmatched combo of speed and elusiveness. With two tight ends and WR Demarcus Robinson as blockers effectively paving the road ahead, Hill ran forward, shielded, then did it all on his own. He cut left, slipped between Cowboys tacklers who finally came out of the end zone to try to get him, then he cut back right and burst into the end zone in a finger snap, for an incredible TD that cut the Dallas lead to 14-10. Don't be surprised if the Hill Mary becomes a trendsetter. Actual quote Hey, I'm just a human being, you know I eat, I talk, I pee like you do. That's how it is. So I feel like a lot of people lose sight of the fact that we're human, Detroit Tay Eric Ebren, current Lions fans punching bag, in an interview with MLive.com's Kyle Meinke actual tweet dude, my job was the dig root. Y'all don't have a clue what coverage we run. Quick to blame me. Arizona DB Tyron Matthew at Matthew. Era, in response to his own team's website writer, Kyle Odegaard, who tweeted during the Cards 49ers game that Matthew had been beaten over the top twice in past few plays. Exports, AI on Canadian Connected and Fleurs Kansas City Chiefs R.G. Laurent de Vernet Tardif of Mont Saint Hilaire, K. played all 57 snaps at Dallas, in his first game in nearly a month after spraining a knee. Seattle Seahawks Tay Luke Wilson of LaSalle, ONT, caught a 10-yard touchdown pass in the fourth quarter against Washington. New York Giants center Brent Jones of Weyburn, Sask, played all 68 offensive snaps against the Rams, and figures to remain starter now that the Giants have placed regular starting center Weston Richburg on IR concussion. If you missed it, GT Orlando Franklin of Toronto was cut by Washington before the weekend, not even a week after the Redskins signed him. Franklin previously was cut this year by the Los Angeles Chargers and New Orleans Saints. 5 Fast Facts 1 Denver has lost four in a row by an average score of 3,113. 2. Cincinnati's offense now ranks last in total yards 270 and rush yards 72 per game. 3. Head coach Bruce Arians has 20 road wins, most in Cardinals history. 4. DT Marcel Darius had three tackles in 12 snaps in his first game for Jacksonville. 5. Darius didn't record his third tackle for Buffalo until Game 5, somewhere between snaps 7,697. Know your history 23 years ago this week, Drew Bledsoe set single-game NFL records for pass completions and attempts, both of which still stand. In a 2,620 overtime win over the Minnesota Vikings on November 11, 1994, the New England Patriots' second year, QB hit running back Kevin Turner for his 45th completion on the last of his 70 attempts en route to victory. Bledsoe passed for 426 yards and three TDs without a pick. In defeat, Minnesota's Warren Moon, in his first season as a Viking, had a slightly higher passer rating in going 26 of 42 for 349 yards a TD and no picks. Guaranteed losers two teams that want win this week kind of the opposite of a suicide pool. I can pick a team only once all season, so each of 32 teams over the NFL schedule's final 16 weeks. 
Last week's picks New York Jets which crushed Buffalo and Washington which won at Seattle. Uff. This week's picks Minnesota at Washington and New Orleans at Buffalo. Season record 97.56 three quarterback rankings my top 20 active and available QBs after Sunday games last week's rankings in brackets 1. Tom Brady. Nay 1 2. Drew Brees. Number 2 3. Alex Smith. KC 3 4. Ben Roethlisberger. Pitt 4 5. Matthew Stafford. DET 5 6. Matt Ryan, ATL 6-7. Dak Prescott, Doll 8-8. Carson Wentz, 5-10-9. Russell Wilson, C-7-10. Cam Newton, Carr 9-11. Derek Carr, Oak 12-12. Jared Goff, Lar 15-13. Kirk Cousins, WSH 13-14. Jameis Winston, TB 14-15. Phil Rivers, Lack 16-16. Marcus Mariota, 10-17-17. Josh McCown, NYJ 19-18. Eli Manning, NYG 1819. Tyrod Taylor, BUF 2020. Jay Cutler, Mia and R out to Sean Watson, injured 11 this week. Quick thoughts on week 10 games all on Sunday and less noted. Seahawks at Cardinals, Thursday, 825 ET last chance for 44 Arizona to re-enter playoff conversation, probably. Saints at Bills, 1 ET well find out just how improved the Saints run defense is against Shady and Tyrod Taylor. Packers at Bears, 1 ET fifth career start for Chicago rookie QB Mitchell Trubisky third for Green Bay QB Brett Henley. Browns at Lions, 1 ET matchup of two of three. Lake Erie Triangle vertices Buffalo's the other. Strange things could happen. Steelers at Colts, 1 ET coming off its bye. Pittsburgh will be rested and ready to crush the Colts. Chargers at Jaguars, 1 ET2. Similar teams. Here comes Sackapalooza. LA can't stop the run, so Jags likely win. Jets at Buccaneers, 1 ET. Tampa Bay is one of the NFL's most disappointing teams. It'll be McCown versus Fitzpatrick Bengals at Titans, 1 ET. Tennessee shakes off its blowout loss as well. Somehow they're 53. Pretty even matchup though. Vikings at Redskins, 1 ET Washington eked out a win at Seattle. Next up, another strong defense. Take the under, Texans at Rams, 405 ET LA offense is as hot as anybody's right now. Injury a ravaged Houston cannot keep up, Cowboys at Falcons, 425 ET before the season, looked like a game of the year. Now, can Atlanta avoid getting blown out? Giants at 49ers, 425 ET1 win and 16 losses between them. Last best chance for either to win a game this season, Patriots at Broncos, 830 ET Shirley, the NFL worst Patriots defense can bottle up Denver's even worse offense, Dolphins at Panthers, Monday, 830 ET Jay Cutler actually looked good at times Sunday night. A corner turned for Miami buys Ravens, Chiefs, Raiders, Eagles taking a knee this week's winter upper here's example number 9 million and 9 that the truth hurts. While providing commentary for play-by-play -play man Jim Nance during Sunday's Dallas KC game, ex-Cowboys QB Tony Romo lobbed this grenade at the feet of Hall of Fame CBKR Deion Sanders, who from 19,892,200,405 was as fast and as able a cornerback as the NFL has seen, on pass plays. But on defending the runner, not so much. After observing that Chiefs corner Marcus Peters doesn't want to tackle, Romo underscored his point on air by adding, he makes Deion Sanders look good at tackling. Sanders wouldn't have it. On his late night NFL Network gig he blasted back at Romo, per ProFootballTalk.com Tony, I tried my best to take the high road, but I don't know the address to the high road. So I got to come at you, man. 10 years as a starter, you're 24 in the playoffs. You ain't won nothing. I tried to bury the hatchet. Both of us work for CBS. I went and shook your hand, I said, Tony, you're doing a great job this year. I thought that would be it. But nevertheless you keep on shooting at me. Tony, what's going on? Man I got a gold jacket that I didn't buy. Doc says hi. And bye. Tony, leave me alone man. I've got a lot of ammunition, man. How many interceptions did you have 19 in 2012? Come on, man, you threw to everyone but me. Tony, come on, man. You know you never won the big one. So stop. Leave me alone. I tried to take the high road but I don't know the address. Thing is, Romo is absolutely correct about Sanders. His next attempt to apply a wrapping, torm tackle on a big, sprinting running back barreling straight toward him in open space will be his first. I have heard it said, albeit ungrammatically, that people sometimes fight the strongest when they know they're the wrongest. Perhaps that applies here to Sanders. Till next week, Jock Rick at postmedia.com.